What's up guys, it's Project, and now that I actually have a working good build for Dreaming the Demon up on my channel, here are some things that I've learned either through experience or my Discord along the way that should help you guys accelerate your builds for Dreaming the Demon and beyond, as well as some other neat things. First things first, graces. There's 10 of them and can only be found or forged. You cannot change the grace that piece has on. So, if you got a really good piece that has star effects but it's the wrong grace, well, you're screwed. Thank Team Ninja for not fixing the same problem that Neo 1 had, and you can be damn sure Ethereals will make things much more frustrating if they continue to ignore a player's pleas for less RNG. So you essentially have to play gotcha for what grace you get, but instead of a waifu, you get, well, the grace you want. But getting the right grace could take dozens of crafts wasting tons of divine fragments and even rare enemy material. This will drive you insane if you haven't farmed for like 500 hours. So, how do you get around that? Save scumming. Save scumming is an old legit method of essentially creating a save state to reload your game back to in case you waste everything. You basically are backing up your save to PlayStation Cloud or USB and then, well, that's it. From there, you waste all your crafting stuff, I usually do it in like sets of 10 to 20 crafts, and if you get screwed by the game, which you likely will, you can redown that uploaded save from the cloud or USB back to your system, which overrides your system save and puts you back to where you were before you started crafting. So this is the way to get around that gotcha. So you would do this process for each piece that has a grace. I'll leave a link in the description that has all 10 graces in Dream of the Demon with the set bonus effects so you can decide what's worth building or not. Essentially though, Benzaiten is the mega OP set, which even got buffed for kind of an odd reason. No reason at all actually. But yeah, that's the number one. Inari is number two. For Benzaiten to beat Inari, it has to have four stacks, so Inari is pretty competitive for certain weapons. And the rest of the sets are conditional or just plain ass. But Ibisu is nice for a luck build in general though. Star effects are the new rare effects that are usually an empowered version of tempered stats or completely new and can only be found via a star stat. Key damage on medium armor can only be gotten from a star stat. Your chance of getting one on a divine are about as much chance as getting the right grace or maybe even harder. So what do you do? The exact same thing. You save scum. As you see in the background, I'm forging, spamming, zero luck steal, so I simply redown on my save and start anew. These are the current obtainable star effects. Heavy armor is pretty much screwed the most as active skill damage and LA weapon damage roll the lowest on it, while light armor rolls the highest. Light also gets dodge and vulnerability, and medium gets key damage. Regarding skill inheritables, you know, like Dragon Dance or EI Quick Draw, I no longer think they're worth it outside of very niche cases. Active skill damage or Ellie weapon damage are just better in general. And last thing regarding star effects, you can get multiple star effects on one piece of gear. But you're probably a masochist if you do that for every piece, so maybe get some help. Moving on to a core and accessory rerolling strat. Big Sudama in various stages can reroll your cores or gear. So if you think save scumming is quote unquote cheating, well, you can reroll for graces or star effects via this method in game. Essentially, you drop two items and the first item you drop is the one that's rerolled. The second item is destroyed however, so keep that in mind. Do not leave the menu after dropping the first though. Stay in the menu and drop the two items and then exit. And then the Sudama will pick them up and exchange it. The Sudama only does this one time per mission however, so you need to save at a shrine before dropping your items. If you don't like what you want, return to the title from the settings and that, like save scumming, puts you back at your last save, which would be before you dropped your items since you saved at the shrine. And you repeat this until you get the stats or whatever cores you want. For charms, the only thing you'd be rerolling for for star effects since everything else can be tempered, is melee versus zero key. It is by far the most desired effect. Otherwise, you can get melee versus saturation, electrified, or even burned as well, if you're going elemental. 
and both Zero Key and Melee vs X can stack on one charm. For cores, this is also a good way to get a good core with base stats that you want, like super efficient yokai abilities or minus one attunement, and then you can inherit other more basic skills via soul infusion. But something like minus one attunement can't be transferred, or at least it's so rare that it seems impossible, so this is a way around that if the core you want is hard for you to farm. Nupepo core, for example, has a super low drop rate, so rerolling with this method is faster than killing dozens of neps for a decent core. The best place currently known to do this is Viper Sanctum in Region 1. You basically have to run to the end of the stage, but the big Suda is near a shrine, so it's easy to reload back in and drop in quickly and exit if needed, rather than spending time running back to a Suda like say in Cherry Blossom Mission over and over. Vipers takes 2-3 minutes to run to the shrine, and then the rest of the process just takes seconds to reroll. So I think it's the best, unless you guys know a better location with a shrine near a big Suda. So, with these things in mind, you can make my builds for example, as this is how I do them. And yes, this does take hours to do, to get all the star effects or right core stats. And yes, it's a grind. But, blame Team Ninja for not just fixing this by letting us just temper these stats, perhaps requiring a more rare material for example, or being able to change graces. With all the quality of life improvements in Neo 2, you would think they would change the biggest gripe that Neo 1 Endgame DLC had, which are these exact things, on top of Ethereals, which we're sure to get next DLC. But, it is what it is for now. Now if you thought that stuff was rare, there's also the new Yata Mirror. This is an ultra rare item that's got the community curious. It's a super rare drop, with most people that have gotten it have said it came from a plus 20 scroll which are also rare to boot. If you have one of these plus 20 scrolls, share them with others by doing co-op, as you can get other people's scrolls via co-op or from Revenants. But co-op is how I got my Yadamir on stream, just doing co-op scrolls that were plus 20 with my followers on Twitch. I've tested with my Discord and on stream, and you can get their exact oh, scroll with the Yadamir. exact stat rolls exactly plus 20, Rarely as a mission reward after completing it, which essentially allows you to dupe the scroll over and over with your pals. The Yadamir will drop within the scroll mission, but that leads to the next tip. Scrolls, high level scrolls, can drop up to plus 18 gear and level 180 gear seems to be more common in them as well. However, you only got so many attempts to do them, right? Wrong. Putting aside incense, if you use a branch to exit the scroll after looting the enemies, it'll back you out of the mission and your attempts will not be wasted. However, you will keep all the loot that you picked up aside from cores. So I did this to grind out a plus 20 weapon, easy. So you can do this exact same thing if you're hunting for a Yada Mirror. So just a tip there. But please, if you do get a pimped out scroll, share it for the sake of the community. It's basically the new Revenant trading, now that most skill inheritables are kind of inferior overall to active or elite weapon damage stars. Speaking of Revenant trading, New Game Plus still drops Revenant gear as it was. Dream of the Demon though randomizes them to make them higher divine level. But New Game Plus, Dream of the Strong is still the same old same old way of getting golden inheritables and such. Like golden attack or dragon dance inheritables that keep getting spammed. <laughs> in my discord and stuff. However, star effects will not drop from your gear, so just keep that in mind. You still have to work your butt off for it. Speaking of graces and star effects though, you could also farm Dream of the Demon for star effects and such from Revenants. The graces are still randomized, but if you want a certain piece of weapon or armor, then you could try to get the grace on that piece from Revenant trading, rather than save scumming. It takes longer obviously, but it's an option. Star effects are random as well, but you could do the same. Kill a bunch of Revenant's Graves or Friend's Graves with the set you want a star effect on. That way, you don't have to waste any resources forging. Just remember to add each other on your PSN friends list so the Revenant drops its gear more often. For Emrita farming and Divine gear, Winds of Ruin farm is still the best place with a Luck build or Emrita build. The max drop level is plus 14, but you get so much that you could build up to plus 20 eventually. Saisetsu's drink with my Tonfa build without any Amrita gain gets me over a hundred million Amrita. So a dedicated Amrita build should give you much more. 
I'm level 367 and 100 million basically gets me one level per run. Regarding spirit cores, Otake Spam is still OP against Yokai. Gozuki and Owl can bring down an enemy's key super fast. New Peppo is basically the new Tengen like buffer in combination with Carnage. Kasha is still great for general play with easy burn status application. Magatu is a great way to recover key while pinning down the enemy with its attacks. Snake and Yuki are still good sub damage boosters for melee versus X. Siorsh plus Nurakabe is best and Mritigage generator if you use her guardian skill via talisman, pumping you to full Emrita if Nora hits with all three of its hits. Ho is not that good as a primary spirit over something like Atlas or Inigami, however for general play, Ho is best secondary spirit as its high attack passive will also affect you at half value, which is still more damage than other spirits give as secondary. Regarding co-op, co-op enemies have increased resist to all effects. This includes the defense down and slot talismans, requiring at least two shots of them just to apply said ailment. This goes the same for my Tanfa build with the Maeda clan auto defense down. It does not work in co-op as they'll resist most of it and you won't actually get the defense down. On top of this, enemies key amounts are much much harder to bring down than solo. So while the key damage meta is meta in single player, co-op, well, not so much. So just keep that in mind if you're mainly a co-op player. There is one last tip to make co-op and scroll missions easier though. Phantom shift form is broken. Using charged strong attacks which you can do with an extraction talisman over and over will stunlock every boss every hit. So essentially one player could stunlock the boss down with phantom while the other players get their deeps in. If your phantom form ends then the next player can use their phantom form to stunlock and you basically each rotate phantom forms to cheese the bosses to death. I know, this is like some Team Dark Side type shit from Monster Hunter. So, use that as you will. And I think that wraps it up for this video. Hopefully some of the things helped you guys out, or you at least understand the stuff better, even if this video is a little bit late. I have more general tips for newer players in my Giga Tips video and in the end screen annotations, so check that out if you're a new player. Smithing text, all 10 graces, etc. links will be in the video description. The next build, as I said in my last build video, will be hatchets. So look forward to that in the next few days, hopefully by the end of the weekend. And hit that like button to support the video. Comment down below any more tips you guys have for gear or for beating Dream of the Demon. And subscribe for more Neo 2 epicness. Don't wait, show that you're not a zero.